with the ASI Alliance, I believe we have a huge, huge opportunity that in the next few years, um, I wouldn't say months just yet, but years, uh, we might decouple from Bitcoin. We might. Hi, Nani. Hi there. Great to see you. How are you doing? All right. We might decouple. So some of you have maybe seen this video that, that I posted a few days ago, why small language models are the next big thing. And I just want to talk about, not about small language models, because I already made the video, but about a few things mentioned here, this. Some of them are a little better than GPT-4, but there's no quantum leap. I think everybody would say that GPT-4 is a quantum step ahead of GPT-3.5. There hasn't been any quantum leap in over a year. As the performance gap continues to close and more models demonstrate competitive results, it raises a question of whether LLMs are indeed starting to plateau, right? We see now um, Claude 3, which is basically even better than GPT-4. Inflection 2 is also great, or Inflection 2.5 is almost at the same level of GPT-4. We have the Gemini model, which is also pretty, pretty good. Um, there was another model, uh, I forgot the name, uh, from, from a smaller company, which is also almost as good as GPT-4. So it plateaus, it all closes in. Of course, we don't know what happens with GPT-5 this year. If I would need to guess, if I would need to make an educated guess about how GPT-5 will look like, I would guess it will be an incremental improvement. It will be the new best LLM, but just incrementally. And it will have a lot of interoperability. Like we have interoperability with image creation right now. We'll likely also get interoperability with, with speech synthesis, maybe with music creation, and also with video creation with Sora. This would be my uh, educated guess at how GPT-5 will look like. Um, maybe not, but this is what I would guess. So we see LLM slowly plateauing and not making huge moves anymore, which is potentially shifting the focus from simply increasing model size to exploring more efficient and specialized architectures. And this is where the ASI Alliance comes in and the Hyperon model, more efficient and specialized architectures. And another thing that I just loved was mentioned in this article is this statement down here. Additionally, the centralized nature of LLMs raises concerns about the concentration of power and control in the hands of a few large tech companies. And like an article on VentureBeats mentioning that is extremely bullish for me when it comes to the ASI <laughs> alliance. Um, because this is actually, um, this is the fundamental use case of what ASI is trying to do. Uh, it's trying to take all this amazing um, development of language large language models and AGI, AI, out of big tech's hands and put it into a democratized, democratized, dem democratized? <laughs> you know what I mean, a democratic process, uh, open for everybody to use uh, and beneficial for everyone. And I love that it was mentioned in this article. But yeah, going back to, to this uh, statement again over here, um, potentially shifting the focus to more efficient and specialized architectures. This is Hyperon, right? This is Hyperon. Hyperon is a more specialized and efficient architecture. Well, it's not more specialized, but it's more efficient. Specialized is now the small language models, but Hyperon could combine many different small language models. I mean, this would also kind of defeat the purpose of a small language model, but also not really, because the purpose of Hyperon is that they all can communicate with one another and get the best out of one another. And just imagine, just imagine this future. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is a possibility. And with this huge annou announcement of uh, huge capital money inflows into Singularity Net, the merger now fully going through, uh, and all of this great news around the ASI Alliance, I wouldn't say the possibility is at least not zero. I, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's good. It's definitely there that this, the following, is a possible future. Large language models plateauing, right? Incremental small improvements, but they are generally all the same, and they are plateauing. They maybe have more interoperability, but they don't get significantly better. And 
all the tech companies are basically in a um, what you call it one way street, right? They cannot go go any further, and they put all their development into LLMs. And um, very renowned, very renowned AGI um, scientists said a long time ago, uh, Jan LeCun, for example, that LLMs at the path to go to AGI don't lead anywhere, right? They are not the right path to AGI. And all the big tech companies have put money into the development of LLMs. Of course, they have a lot of money to put it into other things, but LLMs plateauing, not moving anywhere, big tech focusing on LLMs. And at the side, we have Hyperon. At the side, we have the ASI Alliance with their innovative approach where they integrate all the other approaches, the LLM, maybe different SLMs, then also the PLM, and then also creative approaches. They combine it all together and have a way more efficient and a way more innovative approach that actually reaches maybe even AGI at one point and maybe outperforms all the LLMs that have plateaued. Like it outperforms them because the issue with LLMs is that an LLM is only based on one thing on what is the most likely token in the sequence of tokens to come next. This is what an LLM is based on. What is the most likely token to come next in this sequence? The LLM has no real understanding of the world or a real understanding of what it is talking about. It's just making predictions based on the probability of what token is most likely to come next. That's what an LLM does. The AGI approach of Hyperon could have a real understanding of what the world is and what it's actually talking about when it's saying things. So like this, it could outperform LLMs in certain tasks like crazy, right? And this could be a possible future because LLMs are plateauing and Hyperon, when it launches, generates a few users, then goes out of alpha, goes into beta, generates more users, and then it actually becomes better than ChatGPT. Marketing takes care of itself because all the big YouTubers will talk about Hyperon and all the big tech influencers will talk about Hyperon because it's so much better than the plateau in language models and there will be a freaking huge inflow into the ASI token. And this is, if this happens, I am pretty certain we'll see a decoupling of ASI and Bitcoin and ASI will just go parabolic. We'll go bananas, <laughs> as you all know. So yeah, this might be a possible future and this might be where we see an actual decoupling from one crypto project from the crypto market because for now everything follows Bitcoin. But if the ASI Alliance manages to pull this off, I'm pretty confident that we can see a decoupling. But again, always tread with caution here. This is by far not guaranteed to happen. It's a potential future. You always want to keep in mind that for now, we have not even seen the alpha of Hyperon or anything really from the ASI Alliance, right? I am excited. I love the team. We all are, but still don't just follow blindly. Also look at what they're actually doing. Okay, always uh, think about everything critically, especially about the things that you are excited about, because there are your blind spots. And now let me look into the chat. 